What new discoveries are waiting out there? What new adventures can we see? What are the answers to the never-ending questions in your brain that's in a race to find the reason or the place from divine words to outer space so that the truth of any case can be unfurled in the real world? Science in the real world. Hi, I'm Kirsten. Welcome to Real World Science. Every day, the world is shaped and changed by forces. Forces set the world in motion. So get ready to move as we explore forces in the real world. Intro to Forces Ever wonder what causes things to move faster than a speeding train? Or slower than a tortoise? Or what makes things stay still and not move at all? The word is force. What is force? Simply stated, force is a push or a pull on an object that causes a change in its motion. Right at this very moment, force is at work all around you and me. Force makes it possible to sit in your chair without floating into space or falling into the earth. Forces are involved in just about everything that you do every single day. Push and pull. Every force is either a push or a pull. Pressing a button and throwing a baseball are all examples of a push. And plugging a wire and lifting objects are examples of a pull. These push and pull forces exist throughout the universe and help to shape and change our world. For example, the moon pulls on the oceans causing low and high tides. A magnet pulls iron particles towards it and a nuclear explosion pushes objects out with tremendous power. We'll talk more about that later. Balanced and Unbalanced Forces When an object, such as a golf ball, is not moving, we say that the force is balanced. Gravity pulls it down towards the ground, and the ground pushes the ball back up. Balanced force is when two equal forces work in opposite directions of each other. The ball is kept in place by a balanced force. However, when a greater amount of force is exerted on the ball, say with a golf club, the forces are not equal. There is an imbalance. Unbalanced force is responsible for either a push or a pull. All forces are either balanced or unbalanced. Force makes it possible for these cheerleaders to make a pyramid. In order for the pyramid to keep its shape, the force must remain balanced all of the people in the pyramid must exert equal amounts of force on each other. If the forces become out of balance, the pyramid will collapse and change shape until the force is balanced again. Forces shape our world. Forces give every object its shape. You can alter an object's shape by exerting force on that object. For instance, this clay. Force being applied changes the clay's shape. Here's another example of how force can change the shape of an object. The surface of this wood block has a rough and bumpy shape, but if a piece of sandpaper is rubbed against the wood, it will change the shape by making the surface smooth. Friction. Friction is the force that opposes movement between objects. How does it work? Notice that when you put the rough edges of the sandpaper against the rough edges of the board, they almost interlock. 
This causes the objects to resist movement when you try to rub them against one another. The friction caused by rubbing the two items together wears down the wood, and the surface becomes smooth. When two surfaces are touching, friction exists. Friction results because objects and surfaces are not perfectly smooth. When you apply the brakes to the wheel of a bicycle, friction causes the wheel to stop spinning. Friction causes moving objects to slow down and finally stop. Invisible Forces I mentioned earlier that forces at work all around us, all of the time, even though we can't always see it. Take gravity, for instance. Gravity is the force that causes a ball to fall towards the ground after it's thrown in the air. You can't see it, but gravity is there. Gravity is the force that attracts objects to each other as a result of their mass. Mass is the amount of matter that makes up an object. Gravity keeps you and me from floating into space like astronauts. It's also the force that keeps Earth and the other planets in that orbit around the Sun. You're probably most familiar with gravity being a force that draws objects down toward the Earth. Gravity is what makes things fall to the ground. Another invisible force at work all around us is electromagnetism. Electromagnetism is the force produced by the interaction between electricity and magnets. Now, we have all played with magnets before, and I'm sure we have all seen experiments where a wire is wrapped around a metal object and then an electric current is passed through it. The result is an electromagnet. Electromagnetism is the force used to generate electricity and it generates pictures on a television screen. Without it, you wouldn't be able to see this program. Gravity and electromagnetism are two of the fundamental forces of nature. And they are pretty strong forces too. But there is an even stronger force that exists in nature. It's found in the tiny building block that makes up every object in the universe, the atom. The strongest force in the universe exists inside the atom, keeping all of the smaller particles glued together. It's called nuclear force. The structure of an atom looks something like this. An atom is made up of very tiny particles and has a center called the nucleus. The nucleus holds positively charged protons and neutral neutrons. Surrounding the nucleus are negatively charged electrons. These particles attract or pull on each other and repel or push each other away, creating the structure of an atom. This force of attraction and repulsion between the particles inside the atom is nuclear force. And this amazing force is found everywhere in the universe. Laws of Motion Let's review some of the things we've learned so far. Force can be described as either a push or a pull on an object. Friction is the force created when two objects move against one another. And there are invisible forces at work all around us, like gravity, electromagnetism, and nuclear force. So how do we know all these things about forces? Well, scientists unlock the mysteries of force so that we could understand how they work and how we can use forces to our advantage. One scientist who did important work with forces was Sir Isaac Newton. It is said that in 1687, Newton came up with his theory of gravity when he saw an apple fall off of a tree. Newton also came up with three laws of motion regarding force in the world around us. Newton's first law of motion states the following. An object at rest will remain at rest and an object in motion at a constant speed 
will remain in motion at a constant speed until some outside force is applied to it. Let's take a look at a real-world example of that law. Right now, this bowling ball is at rest, not moving because the forces acting upon it are balanced. The ball will stay at rest until the bowler pushes the ball down the lane, creating an imbalance in the forces. Now, if no other force acts upon the ball, it will keep on rolling forever. Luckily, the friction between the floor and the ball, the force of the pins, and the wall at the end of the lane will help make sure that doesn't happen. Newton's first law is also known as the law of inertia. Inertia is the property of matter that causes an object to resist a change in motion. So what determines an object's inertia? It is the object's mass, which is the amount of matter in an object. The more mass an object has, the greater its inertia. That would explain why it's easy to move a toy car with a simple push, but very difficult to set a real car into motion simply by pushing it. That brings us to Newton's second law of motion, which is expressed in the form of a mathematical equation. Force equals mass times acceleration. First, let me explain acceleration. When you think of acceleration, you might immediately think of things going fast, like race cars speeding around a racetrack. But acceleration is actually any change in an object's direction or rate of speed. So even an object that is slowing down or stopping is said to be accelerating. Newton's second law of motion tells us that the acceleration of an object depends on the object's mass and how much force is applied to the object. When you take a billiard ball and hit it with a cue stick, you are applying force to the ball. When you apply force to the ball, it changes speed or accelerates and shoots across the table. Now watch what happens when you exert the same amount of force on a bowling ball, which has a lot more mass than a billiard ball. It doesn't travel as far or as fast. Remember, we said that the greater an object's mass, the greater its inertia. And objects with greater inertia require more force to accelerate than objects with less inertia. That example demonstrated the role mass and force play when it comes to acceleration. And there's one more important thing to know when it comes to acceleration. When you apply force in a certain direction, the object will always accelerate in the same direction. Like if you swing your foot forward to kick a ball, the ball will also go forward. An object will always accelerate in the same direction of the force. For example, when you hit the ball with the cue stick, it will travel in the direction that you hit it. So now you know about Newton's first and second laws of motion. And there's only one more law of motion that you need to know about. Newton's third law of motion. It says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. One of the best ways to see this law in action is with something called a Newton's Cradle, named after, you guessed it, Isaac Newton. Watch what happens when you release one ball against the others in the Newton's Cradle. The ball at the opposite end responds with an equal and opposite reaction, pushing back in the direction of the original force. Newton's third law explains what makes it possible for a rocket to blast off into outer space. When the thrusters ignite, the force from the burning fuel pushes down and the rock is pushed with equal force in the opposite direction, up. Force is one of the great laws of nature that make it possible for us to explore outer space. Pretty neat, huh? Let's take a moment to review Newton's three laws of motion. Newton's first law of motion states the following. An object at rest will remain at rest and an object in motion at constant speed will remain in motion at constant speed until some outside force is applied to it. 
We saw this with the bowler and the bowling ball. Newton's second law is expressed as a mathematical equation. Force equals mass times acceleration. We saw how the difference in mass between a billiard ball and bowling ball can really change the acceleration caused by the same force. And third, we learned that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Newton's cradle help us see that law at work. Pressure. We sure have covered a lot of information, but there's just one last type of force that we are going to mention, and that's pressure. When you exert force on an object, you are applying pressure. Pressure is a word to describe the force that is exerted on a given area. For example, if I tried to cut an apple using a ruler, it doesn't work too well. But if you apply the same force with a knife, I get a much better result. The pressure applied was the same, so what changed? There is an equation that can help us explain why a knife works better at slicing an apple than a ruler. Here it is. Pressure is equal to force over area. The area covered by the slim blade of the knife is much smaller than the area covered by the wide ruler. The same force over less area gives you more pressure, and that's why a knife does a much better job at cutting the apple. If you have ever been swimming, you know that the force you feel surrounding your body is very different when you're underwater as opposed to on land. Water has mass, just like anything else. And when your body pushes against water molecules, they push back. The deeper you go into the water, the more pressure you feel. And even though you almost can't feel it, air has mass too. And because the air has mass, it can put pressure on objects too. When you pump up a bicycle tire, it is air pressure that changes the shape of the tire. Well, there you have it. Just about all the basics you need to know about forces. You learn that a force is either a push or a pull. And force is constantly at work all around you. Gravity, electromagnetism, and nuclear force are some examples. We examined Newton's three laws of motion and saw how pressure can do some pretty neat things. Force, it has a major impact on everything in the real world.